Good morning, members of MPCM FOCAP. Welcome to our Laging Handa press briefing. Today we have Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar with DFA Undersecretary Ernesto Abella, BI Spokesperson Dana Sandoval, RITM Doc Director Dr. Celia Carlos, and uh, WHO Philippine Representative Dr. Rabindra Abengasihe, Dr. Rabi. Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar. Salamat, Rocky. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa atin ngayon at nakikinig ng live mula dito sa uh, press briefing room. Uh, good morning to our friends uh, sa Malacanang Press Corps. Let me start with my opening statement. With the confirmation of two cases of the novel coronavirus in the Philippines, the administration assures everyone that the government is taking necessary actions to quell the spread of this contagion. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has ordered temporarily banning the entry of any person, regardless of nationality, except Filipino citizens and holders of permanent resident visa issued by the Philippine government, directly coming from China and its special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. The president will be presiding later today, the next meeting of the task force. That's going to be in the afternoon. And uh, there, will also, there, there will also be a, uh, a press con after that. And so it's open to the media. The Department of Health has released protocols in cooperation with other agencies of the government and has been providing up-to-date advisories to address the misconception and the virus and how to protect oneself from incurring such. Caution is vital. And we ask the public to consider only vetted reports and updates from the Department of Health and other lead government agencies. Meanwhile, the Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, has earlier said that it can repatriate Filipinos in Wuhan City back to the country for free, provided that existing rules and laws with regard to the virus are strictly observed. Mandatory quarantine, among others. In times like this, it is easy to mislead our fellow Filipinos, so we urge the public to stop spreading rumors and goading fears, as well as ending the stigma against specific nationality or race. There is no room for discrimination, and there should be none at all. Let us set aside our individual differences as we ask for a moratorium to people who want to hijack this situation and reduce it to mere pol politicking because lives are at stake. United in one common purpose, we will overcome this health scare. And now I turn over the microphone to uh, Dr. Carlos of the RITM. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I would just like to give a few uh, presentation slides on uh, what is known, uh, currently known about the virus and what our agency, the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, has been doing to um, address this with the Department of Health. So we now uh, are well aware that this is a coronavirus and its name has been derived because of its appearance of spikes on the surface. Next, please. Um, it causes about 10 to 30 percent of upper respiratory tract infections in adults and uh, we may have been infected unknowingly with this virus in the previous uh, months of our lives. Next, please. The emergence of the virus actually is suspected to have uh, arisen from some animal species and currently being suspected are the bats population. Next, please. The, the spectrum of illness can be a uh, wide range from asymptomatic infection to simple cough and colds, fever and diarrhea, to pneumonias, uh, to severe respiratory failure, and in fact, to death. Next, please. 
There are currently seven now known coronaviruses. Four were previously known as human coronaviruses. Then came the SARS, MERS-CoV, and now the novel coronavirus. Next. Uh, we know that it originated from Hubei in China. Next. And uh, just to emphasize, the age range, age group mostly affected are uh, on the average 55 years based on the latest publications, mostly males at 68% and more than half have chronic diseases, notably cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases. Next, please. And main manifestations are fever in 83% and cough in 82%. Next. And infection is mainly uh, acquired via respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes. That's why it is advised that people with respiratory infections cover their mouth. Next. And the reproduction number, which basically defines the number of, uh, the number of people that one sick person can infect is about 2.24. So an infected person can infect around more than two uh, other people in a non-immune population. Next. And no specific antiviral treatment is currently recommended, although there are many studies looking into this. Next. And treatment, therefore, is mainly supportive. If we compare the case fatality rates, these are the death rates of people who get infected in comparison with other infectious diseases, it's about 2% compared to 99% of cases of rabies, where we all know almost all people die of rabies once infected, compared to MERS of 34% and the Ebola of 39.8, or close to 40%. Next. And we have heard recently that WHO has declared a public health emergency of international concern for this infection, and Dr. Ravi can perhaps be the one to elaborate on that. Next, please. The more important um, steps to avoid getting sick are to prevent getting infected. And there are different ways of how to protect oneself. This has been uh, emphasized many times by Secretary Duque. Cleaning of hands, avoid touching our eyes, nose, or mouth with uh, unclean hands or unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with anyone with flu-like symptoms or colds and avoid unprotected contact with live uh, wild or farm animals. And of course, to protect others, we need to wear masks if we are infected. Next. There are ways of disinfecting objects and surfaces, and there have been proven agents, mainly a uh, hypochlorite solution, and there are already recommendations uh, on how this can be prepared, which is projected in this slide. So diluted household bleach disinfects within 10 to 60 minutes from contact time. Next. And this is just a figure to illustrate how we prepare the solution from the original 5% bleach available in our department stores and groceries. And uh, use of this uh, may be therefore easy since the uh, chemical anyway is available in most uh, groceries and supermarkets. Next. And the question of should we wear masks, this has been addressed in many occasions. And this is a um, um, poster from the WHO. Yes, we wear masks if we have respiratory symptoms such as cough and difficulty of breathing. If you are providing care to individuals with respiratory symptoms. And if you are a health worker and attending to individuals with respiratory symptoms. Currently, since there is no community transmission of the novel coronavirus in the Philippines, we are not recommending its use for the general public who do not have respiratory symptoms. Next. So this is the usual surgical mask, and we have the colored uh, portion outward and the white portion inward. And the proper way of using that is for the colored portion to be the exposed part and the white portion. Um, towards the person. The white portion is responsible for um, trapping the droplets from the individual wearing the um, mask, whereas the outer portion, which is colored, has some anti, uh, um, 
um, resistant resistance to uh, water, so it has it protects the wearer from um, droplets coming from the outside. Next, please. And uh, if we plan to travel abroad, there are certain things that it may be best to observe. We need to get enough rest. We need to update our shots, especially the flu and other vaccinations. Uh, we need to observe good hand hygiene, and we need to eat and drink from uh, safe, clean, and reliable sources. Next. And uh, now there are already advisories on uh, the need for persons under investigation to be admitted. And there are four criteria currently employed by the DOH in order to make an assessment of whether an individual is a PUI. And these considerations are the presence or absence of fever, presence or absence of respiratory infection, uh, travel history for the past 14 days, this time already expanded from Hubei only initially to the whole of China and its administrative regions, and history of exposure uh, to an infected person or working in a facility caring for infected people. Next. And uh, we have this uh, guide tool distributed in uh, all of the DOH facilities to help health workers make an assessment. Next. And we have certain criteria to discharge, mainly uh, two negative uh, specific novel coronavirus test results done 48 hours apart. If the patient is asymptomatic, if the lab tests are improving, and including the x-ray findings. Next, please. And now I, I will show some of the interventions that the RITM has been doing to help address the problem. The RITM is the uh, Infectious Disease Specialty Center of the Department of Health. It has a two-pronged role in responding to this outbreak both in the management of persons under investigation and uh, you know, suspected patients who are infected, and for laboratory testing. Uh, we are providing the uh, novel coronavirus PCR test to identify whether uh, the virus is present from an individual's uh, secretions. Next, please. So we have uh, participated in the drafting of the guidelines on preparedness in response to this organism. Next and continues to contribute to that. We are a member of the DOH Task Force for Coronaviruses. Next. We participate in um, many um, conferences to share information to the public. Next. And in the hospital, we coordinate with referring hospitals and the Bureau of Quarantine for patients suspected to have novel coronavirus infection. We receive uh, patients uh, arriving from overseas who are suspected to be PUIs, and we manage them. We do post-discharge care. We ensure that infection prevention and control measures are in place, and of course, the lectures. Next. In the laboratory, we coordinate with all facilities uh, with admitted PUIs and uh, process and release results of tests that we do for novel coronavirus. We have coordinated with the WHO re uh, Reference Laboratory for confirmatory tests initially. Next. And in the long term, as part of efforts to uh, implement universal health care, uh, we are participating in the establishment of infectious disease specialty centers in other parts of the country so that the skill and the laboratory facilities for uh, infectious disease cases can be uh, shared with other areas of the country. We are planning for surge capacity testing, and we have provided some guidance for upgrade of DOH hospitals. Next. So that will, there are plans also to use an electronic tool to link EPI and lab data for risk asset assessment and assist in the procurement of reagents for our regional laboratories. I think that's the last, next, yeah. And of course, to, uh, to more comply more closely with international health regulations, uh, these are standards which uh, countries must comply with in order to be able to address properly any events such as uh, infectious disease outbreaks uh, that we are facing nowadays. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Carlos. Salamat po. Our next 
uh, speaker is the spokesperson of uh, the immigration. Mamdana. Thank you, Sec. In behalf of the Bureau of Immigration, Jaime, uh, Commissioner Jaime Morente, good morning to our colleagues from the government and the WHO, as well as our friends from the media. This is to give you a rundown of the actions of the BI to help fight the 2019 novel coronavirus. As early as the fourth week of January, all BI frontliners were required to wear protective masks to prevent the spread of the 2019 NCOV at the airports and seaports. The Bureau of Quarantine has likewise conducted pocket trainings for frontline airport personnel on protecting themselves from the virus. Last January 23, we have assisted the Bureau of Quarantine by providing information on PUIs. The following day, January 24, the BI has started denying applications for visa upon arrival for Chinese nationals coming from Wuhan province following the temporary cancellation of the Civil Aeronautics Board of all direct flights from Wuhan, Wuhan City to the Philippines. On January 28, the issuance of the visa upon arrival for Chinese nationals was suspended in an effort to slow down the arrival of Chinese tour groups. By January 30, despite not receiving any directive regarding travel bans, all frontline personnel were instructed to conduct prudent assessment of passengers and refer passengers who came from Hubei province to the Bureau of Quarantine for checking or double checking. On January 31, talks about the possible repatriation of Filipinos in China started. Hence, the BI created a special team of inspectors to conduct immigration formalities for them. On February 1, the BI implemented a ban on foreigners from Hubei province following an order from the president to stop the entry of all visitors from Hubei. Notices were likewise sent to airlines and shipping agents requiring them to screen passengers before boarding to restrict the arrival of passengers who have visited Hubei province in the last 14 days. Yesterday, February 2, the president ordered an expansion of the travel ban to include the entire People's Republic of China and its special administrative regions, which are Hong Kong and Macau. The BI immediately implemented this and following the president's orders, advised all stakeholders that all foreign nationals, regardless of their nationality, who will be coming from China and its special administrative regions, shall be turned back and not allowed to enter the Philippines. However, Filipino nationals and Philippine permanent res resident visa holders will be allowed to enter subject to a 14-day quarantine to be implemented by the Bureau of Quarantine. Other visa holders and transiting passengers will also be denied entry. The ban includes passengers who have been to the areas of concern in the last 14 days. The BI has also sent a notice to airlines and shipping agents requiring them to screen passengers before boarding to restrict the arrival of aliens who have visited China, Hong Kong, and Macau in the last 14 days. Also part of the ban is the departure of Filipinos going to China and its special administrative regions. The ban does not specify exemptions. Hence, all Filipinos, regardless of visa type, will be barred from traveling to China and, it, and its special administrative regions temporarily. The BI urges everyone to temporarily refrain from unnecessary travel and bear with the government as this measure is implemented. Commissioner Morente is appealing to the public, asking everyone to work hand in hand to ensure that the country is protected from this virus. Moving forward, the BI is ready to implement further policy changes relating to foreign travel as deemed appropriate by the Department of Foreign Affairs or the Office of the President as recommended by the Department of Health. Thank you. Thank you, Spokesperson Dana. Uh, now to our DFA Undersecretary, Ernie Abelia. Morning. The Department of Foreign Affairs continues to monitor uh, the coronavirus outbreak and ensures protection of overseas Filipinos and the well-being and protection of the local population. No Filipinos in China are confirmed to be infected with the 2019 NCOV acute respiratory disease, none. 
um, there are 295,047 Filipinos in mainland China. The Philippine Embassy and six Philippine Consulates General in China continue to issue timely advisories through the official website and social media like WeChat. All FSPs or Foreign Service Posts have dedicated 24-7 hotlines that Filipino nationals can call. Public advisory providing hotline numbers for Shanghai uh, Consulate General in Hubei Province. Hotline numbers, uh, Philippine Embassy in Beijing, Chongqing, Chongqing, Guangzhou, Hong Kong SAR, Macau SAR, and Xiamen. Contingency plans of all China Foreign Service posts are continually updated to reflect realities on the ground. Second, the DFA announced Friday, 31 January 2020, an advisory calling for the voluntary repatriation of Filipinos in Hubei in China. They are to contact the Consulate General in Shanghai by today, the 3rd of February. The aircraft may leave uh, for China or sometime this week. A rapid response team from DFA UMWA, along with five to seven medical personnel from DOH, may be deployed to fetch the Filipino repatriates. <laughs> DOH has drafted guidelines for the repatriation. Third, DFA imposed uh, on the 2nd of February, 2020, temporary suspen suspension of visa issuance to travelers from China and its in ad special administrative region effective immediately. Temporary suspension of visa issuance is also extended to foreign nationals who, within the past 14 days, immediately preceding arrival in the Philippines, have been to China since, uh, to China and its SARs. This is on top of the previous announcement temporarily suspending vis visa issuance for travelers coming from Hubei province. End of update. Thank you, Yusek Ernie. Our last speaker before you can ask questions is the representative of the World Health Organization here in the Philippines, Dr. Rabi. Thank you, Secretary Martin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, WHO has been working with the Philippine government since the announcement of an uh, outbreak of unknown, uh, outbreak of pneumonia of unknown etiology that was officially communicated by the National Health Commission of China on the 31st of December 2019. Um, we have worked closely with the authorities in China, and the Chinese authorities have prioritized the response to this outbreak. Uh, their efforts have contributed to us gaining significant knowledge on this particular outbreak. Uh, they have contributed to identifying the pathogen that caused this outbreak of pneumonia initially in the city of Wuhan, which is now known as the 2019 coronavirus. Uh, subsequent to that, on the, by about the 10th of January, a diagnostic test for detecting this uh, pathogen was developed, and this has also been shared through WHO with member states. This has facilitated the ability of many countries, including here in the Philippines, to conduct locally diagnostic tests. Um, WHO has been closely monitoring the evolving of this outbreak um, and has been concerned about the emergence of this new pathogen. Because of this concern, our Director General summoned the Emergency Committee of the International Health Regulations on the 22nd of January uh, whether to consider the evidence and decide whether this, needs to be, this event needs to be classified as a public health emergency of international concern. The committee could not reach a consensus on the 22nd and was reconvened on the 23rd. And they decided that based on currently available, available evidence on the 23rd, uh, it did not warrant to be classified as a public health emergency of international concern. However, the committee, uh, at the request of the DG, uh, expressed their willingness to reconvene at short notice. And based on further emerging evidence, the committee was reconvened on the 31st of January. And at these deliberations, based on new evidence that had emerged since the 23rd of January, the emergency of committee of the international health regulations 
a panel consisting of experts, international experts, independent international experts, recommended to WHO the classification of this event as a public health emergency of international concern. Uh, let me clarify what that would mean. Uh, the cl class classification of the event as a public health international uh, emergency of international concern provides WHO the opportunity to better coordinate an international response, mobilizing resources of all member states to address this challenge. Uh, the committee and WHO continues to believe that this outbreak can be controlled and the spread of the virus can be stopped. WHO is working together with member states to strengthen their preparedness capacities to improve their ability to deal with possible or likely importations of cases and to better manage those cases. Uh, WHO commends the actions taken by the Filipino government to strengthen its preparedness, uh, to build capacity to detect cases, and WHO continues to work together with the Department of Health Philippines and the Filipino government to increase its preparedness and response capacities to deal with this outbreak. We remain confident that the outbreak can be controlled and we can prevent uh, expanded spread of this disease. Uh, to date, uh, there have been more than 17,000 cases reported. The vast majority of the cases continue to be reported from the People's Republic of China. Um, the, the outbreak has also unfortunately resulted in the death of 362 people, uh, all of them in the People's Republic of China, excluding the one death which happened on Saturday here in the Philippines. The disease has now been reported from 23 countries, several of those countries also reporting local transmission, although most of the cases that those countries have reported had a travel history to uh, affected areas in Hubei province, particularly to Wuhan. Um, WHO reiterates that WHO has made available and is mobilizing all resources in its capacity at country office level in the region and globally to address this uh, emergency of international concern. And we will continue to work with the Department of Health Philippines and the government of the Philippines to increase your preparedness and response capacities. WHO is confident that at this point of time, there is no community spread of the disease as per evidence that is currently available within the Philippines. We want to reiterate that the two cases that have been reported here in the Philippines were both from travelers who originated from Wuhan, who actually traveled with early signs of the disease. So uh, we commend the government of the Philippines for the measures it's implementing, and we work in partnership with them to strengthen their response capacities. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Rabi Abayasing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Celia Carlos, uh, Yusuk Ernia Belia, and uh, uh, Bureau of Immigration spokesperson, Dana Sandoval. I turn over to Under Secretary Rock Ignacio for the press conference. Okay, question. Raymond Tinasa, then Mela. Uh, good noon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Secretary Andanar, siguro. Uh, now, yung papatuparin o pagpatupad ng uh, temporary travel ban, uh, kasama ba dito ang, for example, yung mga, may concern kasi yung mga doctors from US who are planning to travel for a medical mission sa Gimaras. Magtanong sila kung kasama ba sila kasi meron silang layover or stopover sa Hong Kong and mainland China, then back then to Manila. Kung kasama ba sila sa uh, ban sa entry ng sa Pilipinas? Um, if, they, uh, if they are 
part of the delegation po for of Hello there. Um, if they are part of the delegation of the WHO and government efforts in combating the virus, then they will be allowed to enter the Philippines. No, I mean, uh, not necessarily uh, part of the delegation of the WHO, but uh, only doctors, uh, regular doctors from U.S. who are traveling to the Philippines, but they have a layover or stopover in Hong Kong and China. So they are part of the affected to be banned, barred entry. Um, Doon po sa directive na natanggap natin from the Office of the President, all Filipino nationals po. So uh, lahat po ng dadating na Filipino are um, subjected to the assessment of the Bureau of Quarantine. They will also not be allowed to depart the country. The, yung not necessarily Filipino nationals, uh, say okay. U.S. nationals or uh, European nationals who are coming to the Philippines, but they have a scheduled layover mm -hmm or stop over for four to five hours in the airport, then flight to Manila. Even transiting passengers po, basta bumaba po ng Hong Kong, okay. mag over po sa Hong Kong, mag-transit, they will still not be allowed to depart, uh, to enter the Philippines. Kay Under Secretary Abelia, sir, now that uh, umiiral na yung uh, temporary travel ban and our local aircraft or airplanes, PAL and Cebu Pacific, already canceled or suspended, flights to and fro from any, from China to their SARS. Uh, ano yung magiging arrangement for yung aircraft nila? For example, from Wuhan or from Hong Kong or from ano, kung wala naman ng bibiyahing airline? Uh, may, katulad nung na report kang ina, uh, inaaregla ng gobyerno natin na may mapadala tayong aircraft na patungo okay. sa, sa, doon sa affected areas na yon. So, uh, ang expected po ay... Uh, sometime this week. Yun ang target date ma makarating doon para i-ferry back yung mga, yung mga nag-volunteer na magpaparipate. Thank you. Okay, Mela, then Maricel and Saliman. Uh, for Ms. Dana of Bureau of Immigration. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I know it was already mentioned earlier, but just to reiterate, since there are so many criticisms, it was January 31 when WHO declared the 2019 NCOVARD as a public health emergency of international concern. Prior to this declaration, do you think the Bureau of Immigration make necessary or enough actions to quell the spread of the contagion? Um, yes po, we believe so po kasi we work with the recommendations of the Department of Health and um, we cannot implement policy changes with regards to travel ban unless directed by the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Office of the President. So lahat po yan, um, we take into consideration the uh, recommendations of the Department of Health which is based on the uh, uh, recommendations of the World Health Organization. And... Uh Last one question na lang, ma'am. Uh, China declared human-to-human -human transmission of the NCOV on January 20. Then Singapore, with 13 confirmed cases of NCOV, banned travelers with recent visit to China on January 20, 31. The Philippines, with two confirmed cases, made a similar ban on February 2. For BI, uh, do you think government response is just right or is it late as alleged by some critics? Um, we believe po that it's just right kasi naka like I said earlier po nakaangkla po tayo on the recommendations of the World Health Organization and um, ang ating Department of Health is um, equipped in uh, assessing the situation and the needs of our country kung kailangan po natin ng travel ban. So yung naging response po natin is appropriate naman with the recommendations of the World Health Organization. Okay, thank you. Ma Maricel? Um, Yusek Abelia or Secretary Andenar, good morning. Sir, what will happen to um, those OFWs who are just here in the Philippines for uh, vacation? Will they be allowed to go back? Temporarily po, due to the travel ban, hindi po muna um, because wala pong distinction between visa types dun sa lumabas po na direktiba dun sa travel ban. So lahat po ng Filipino nationals who are in the country will not be allowed to depart for the uh, Hong Kong, uh, China, and Macau. But given that situation, since yun po kasi yung source of income nila, of course, so I understand some of them are 
are concerned what will happen to their jobs in China or in Hong Kong or in Macau, what's what's the plan of the government for these OFWs? Um, we fully understand po because eh, kung yun ang talagang kinabubuhay nila but I, I believe po the POEA and the OWA will be doing their part po in, in ensuring na itong mga trabaho po nitong mga ating kababayan abroad ay mananatili despite this travel ban. Ma'am, just a clarification on the quarantine of Filipinos who are coming back here. Paano po yung magiging procedure nun dun sa mandatory quarantine? Talagang self quarantine lang yung gagawin sa kanila? Um, it might be best po for the Bureau of Quarantine to answer this question because um, they are the ones po who are um, implementing the quarantine. Uh, in immigration po, we process the documents of the person and the person itself. But when it comes to health matters upon arrival, it's really the Bureau of Quarantine. Okay, thank you Okay, po. Salima. Hi, um, to Dr. Rabi of the WHO. Sir, can we just get your the reaction of the WHO to news coming from Thailand that a certain cocktail of antivirals used to treat uh, flu and um, HIV is uh, used to treat NCOV patients and apparently there's one who um, had a dramatic improvement. Um, what do you know about this? Thank you for the question. We've seen media reports of this. As you know, the declaration of a public health emergency of international concern also encourages research into better managing patients and looking for treatments and preventive interventions such as vaccines. So we encourage uh, evidence-driven efforts in that uh, direction. We've seen reports coming from Thailand, uh, of course, the improvement of one patient does not constitute evidence. WHO will work more closely with the authorities in Thailand, but also we are continuing to work with the authorities in China and with other research institutions to build evidence of what practices should be adopted by affected countries to improve case management, to prevent the transmission, uh, and uh, no sooner there is clear evidence of what works, WHO will share that. In the meantime, WHO has shared interim guidance with member states on how to prevent and control infection, how to manage cases, and how to do diagnosis of suspected patients through lab testing. So we need to recognize that this is an evolving situation. It's a new disease. And WHO remains committed to working together with the global research community to generate that evidence and share it with member states when available. Okay. Um, sir, uh, right now what we know is that transmission is through droplets, um, uh, respiratory. But um, in the US, I understand there was a, a patient uh, where they found the virus in the stool sample. Um, what do you know about this, and uh, is this alarming? So we know that uh, the virus will be contained in body fluids, and uh, usually it being a respiratory disease, the commonest mechanism of transmission from symptomatic individuals is through sneezing and coughing when droplets containing the virus are either absorbed by somebody in close proximity or uh, rest on some surface which then becomes a fomite, an infected surface, uh, the touching of which could help transmit the disease to somebody else because you touch where the place where the virus is and then touch your eyes or nose or mouth and the virus can enter you. So that's the common mode of transmission. But it's not unknown that uh, coronaviruses can cause intestinal side effects and so reports that uh, viruses are contained in the feces are not entirely unexpected but we do believe that that's not the primary mode of transmission of this outbreak. The, the reports of uh, the presence and possible implications for its transmission through fecal oral routes are being investigated but not as yet confirmed by WHO. Um, to Dr. Carlos and maybe uh, Secretary Andanar, um, given na wala pa naman po talaga na kumakalat sa mga Pilipino, wala pa pong community spread, ito pong NCOV, pero yun nga po that um, 
posible pa rin naman uh, through uh, fecal uh, matter kumalat yung mga ganito pong klaseng viruses. Um, how, uh, how are you reacting to this? Kasi nga, given na maraming Pilipino po ang wala pong mga sarili po nila mga toilets. Um, first, firstly, there are other coronaviruses previously identified like MERS-CoV in which there was proven um, a virus excretion through the feces. So it may not be surprising that the same thing will be later evident from the novel coronavirus. So what do we do? We need to strengthen um, um, advice to the public to practice oral um, and proper food hygiene, to wash their hands uh, well before and after eating, before and after using the toilet, which is not really common. <laughs> because we see many, many uh, Filipinos using uh, the, the toilets without washing their hands before and after. So we need to strengthen that uh, information. And um, we need to be careful about disposal of uh, feces. Uh, they should be properly uh, contained and uh, put in the proper waste disposal bins, especially for areas where there are no uh, established sewage systems. So I, I think for now, those are the recommendations, especially in areas where there are no established uh, sewage systems. Secretary Andenar, uh, would you know po if meron tayong quarantine facility na uh, in, uh, sabi nila mag Saisai or in Cabalio Island, um, ano po ba yung balak po gawin doon? Lalo na po doon sa mga babalik po ng mga Pilipino from uh, those countries po. Ang uh, sinabi po ni Secretary Duque is um, they're considering uh, Fort Magsaysay kasi nga sa laki ng facility at uh, pwedeng i-quarantine doon kahit na ilang ilang uh, daan o libong pasyente 10,000 yung ano yung uh, actually uh, capacity ng uh, Fort Magsaysay. Uh, as, pero yung sa Visayas and sa Mindanao bukod doon sa mga ospital ng ating uh, Department of Health uh, wala pang nababanggit sa akin si uh, Secretary Duque kung saan ni ano kung saan ni quarantine yung mga possible uh, carriers nitong NCOV. Uh, but later on, we have uh, an emergency meeting with the president and after that we will have a press conference so uh, baka pwedeng itanong mo ulit dun sa uh, merong merong dagdag po si uh, Dr. Carlos. In the interagency meeting last Friday, the plan was for a team uh, from the DOH, from uh, quarantine, from immigration, DFA, to visit the prospective facilities. That includes Fort Magsaysay. So depending on the findings, uh, the decision will be made on where to quarantine the returning Filipinos. Pero po, nagsimula na po silang bumalik. Uh, kahapon po tayo nag-start nung atin pong issue ng temporary ban. So syempre po yung mga uh, nakabalik po mga Pilipino, although alam nila may self-quarantine, hindi po nila alam kung saan sila pupunta, kung ano po ang gagawin. Uh, hindi po kasi malinaw yon sa public na, kunwari ako po, dumating ako, babalik po ako sa pamilya ko, uh, at sasakay po ako ng bus, sasakay ako ng taxi. So yung ganun pong um, pag-aalala, paano po ba natin yun uh, ma makokontrol? Uh, so far, uh, ulitin ko lang po yung sinabi natin kangina na yung ano yung proposal po yung, yung, yung wala pa pong nabalik mula sa Wuhan at sa Hubei province. Pero po sir, yung mga galing China, Hong Kong, Macau, syempre po, syempre po kabado po sila ngayon, uh, bumalik po sila kahapon. So uh, ano po yung instructions natin sa kanila? Paano po tayo magsa-self-quarantine? Paano po yung proseso? the decision tool earlier in my presentation and there's a part there where uh, if uh, personnel returning from China have no symptoms, no fever, no respiratory symptoms, just a history of travel, they need to do self-monitoring at home. So uh, they stay at home, uh, preferably separated from the rest of the household. If they can stay in a separate room, that's much better. They are advised to wear masks uh, for around 14 days from from arrival from the date of arrival uh, until they complete the two weeks 
if they have no symptoms, then that's it. But if they develop symptoms, they are advised to go to a facility which can evaluate them. So that's the general instruction. Okay, thank you, Salima. Can we have and, and sorry to monitor their temperature twice a day. Okay. Can we have our friend from? Please state your name. Microphone, please. Hello, I'm Sara Gomez from International News Agency FM. Uh, my question is for Bureau of Immigration. Um, I would like to confirm some reports I've read this morning about that some hundreds of foreigners, including 300 Chinese nationals, stranded in the airports. I don't know if all of them are in Naya. Uh, apparently, in, right now, they, they weren't allowed to mm -hmm. get into the Philippines, but now they can leave because there are no flights available. Mm -hmm. can, we know, can we confirm that figures and to know what, what would happen to them? Um, yes, that's true. There are around 300 Chinese nationals who are stranded in Naia because um, most of the airlines have canceled their flights already to and from the different parts of China. But uh, our office is coordinating with uh, uh, the Chinese embassy and they have pledged to, to send an aircraft to fetch their uh, uh, citizens who are uh, stranded in the country. And um, maybe today or in the next few days, we'll find out the details of this um, uh, uh, flights that the Chinese embassy will be arranging. And where are they now? Um, currently, they're still at the Naia. A, there's yes. a specific area in yes. the airport? They are only Chinese or there are also foreigners from other... Um, there countries? are also other foreign nationals, but most of the ones that were um, stranded since yesterday have already departed. Okay. Uh, and I have another question for Undersecretary Abella. Can we know... I don't know if... Can we know... Uh, when can we expect the arrival of the Filipinos uh, repatriated from China? And I don't know if you have uh, an idea of how many of them will be a, had already yes. requests to be repatriated to the Philippines. All right. Uh, as of an hour ago, um, 45 minutes ago, uh, we, have found, we found out that about 40 Filipinos have already requested to be repatriated. Uh, the, the expected uh, goal is to be able to uh, uh, fetch them within the week. That is the intended goal. So, Sorry, 40? 40, 40, yes. Thank you. From uh, uh, Wuhan, uh, Hubei province, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, choose the new. Kay ma'am Dana po. Hi, ma'am. Uh, nababanggit po kanina mayroon ng 23 countries na affected ng coronavirus. Uh, pero nakakonsentrate lang po tayo ng travel ban sa China, Macau, at saka Hong Kong. Yung iba bang bansa na affected na rin ito, like Taiwan, for example, Malaysia, mayroon na recorded, Singapore, wala ba tayong i-impose din na travel ba ban dyan sa mga safe ba tayo sa mga dumarating na citizens nila or other nationality coming from that countries papunta rito sa Pilipinas or tayo naman ipupunta din sa kanila? Siguro po kung may changes in policy dito sa ating travel bans, if, if um, there, there is a need to expand it, it will be recommended po by the Department of Health and the World Health Organization. Yeah. Ay, ang concern lang, ma'am, is baka masyado tayo nakakonsentrate sa China, Macau at Hong Kong. Baka malusutan naman tayo dito sa iba pang other countries na affected na rin pala nitong coronavirus. Yes, but we believe naman po that the capacities of our Department of Health, also the World Health Organization, is enough naman po to guide the, the President and our uh, other government agencies in crafting changes in the policies po dito sa travel ban. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Francis? Microphone, please. Good morning, po, uh, uh, sirs, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, Sir Andenar, tanong ko lang, uh, nagkaroon po ng komento si Vice President Lenny Robredo about sa hindi raw maayos sa pagbibigay ng impormasyon ni, uh, uh, ni Secretary Panelo about the coronavirus. Ngayon, in-encourage na si Presidente Duterte na as the head of the government na siya po ang lumabas sa publiko, uh, magbigay ng update para at least ang mga tao po eh, mas ma mapanatag sa nangyayari ngayon sa, sa, sa atin. Sa, with regards to sa virus po, ano pong komento ng palasyo dun, sir? We respect the suggestion of the Vice President. Mamaya, meron tayong, meron tayong emergency meeting with the President at exactly pag-uusapan itong uh, 2019 and coronavirus. Then after which, there's a press con 
So you may ask the president uh, later on. Thank you. Okay, Rosalie then yellow. Good morning po. Kay Ms. Dana po. Ma'am, uh, may exceptions po ba dun sa travel ban? For example, meron pong nakascheduled na operation sa, any, sa China or kaya sa Macau and Hong Kong and pati po ba yung mga diplomatic personnel ay exempted dun sa travel ban to China? Yung mga Filipinos po that would be uh, departing the country, wala pong exemptions na nakalagay doon. But of course, for such reasons po, if there is a re really a health emergency, uh, maaari po siguro through the recommendations of the Department of Health then um, Kasama din po yung isa pong question na, na nag emerge yung mga dual citizens, kung maaari po ba silang umalis ng bansa given that they are both Filipino and foreign nationals. Um, sa atin po, uh, we allow the departure po upon presentation of the foreign passport. Pwede rin po bang makuha yung bilang kung ilan na po yung hindi po pinayagan na makapasok ng bansa? Mga Chinese and foreign nationals na nanggaling sa China and other special administrative regions. Sa ngayon po, we are still collating the figure kasi the directive just happened yesterday uh, uh, morning. So, kinokolekta pa po natin yung figures. But perhaps in the next few days po, we will be able to give you a more concrete number. Last na lang po. Uh, I-clarify ko lang po yung naging statement nyo kanina dun sa mga OFW na hindi makakabalik dahil sa travel ban. So ang OWA ang magbibigay ng assistance. What particular at assistance po? Um, siguro po, uh, coordination with their agencies para po maprotektahan yung kanilang trabaho bago pa po sila um, pong makabalik sa bansa. Given the situation, I'm sure um, everyone understands that each country has been conducting their own um, restrictions when it comes to travel because of the, dito nga sa kumakalat na sakit na ito. So I'm sure that people will understand that, this, uh, that we are doing this, the government is doing this for the protection of everybody. Okay, Ms. Yellow, then Pia and Ace. Um, morning. Um, Yellow from China Central Television. I, I have a question to Secretary Andanar. Um, because yesterday I saw a post by uh, Ambassador uh, Chito Romana in his Facebook, and he posted a song written by Filipinos living in Wuhan. And this, in this song, these people said, uh, I hope I pronounce it right, Bangong Wuhan Dayong Magasama Sama, Bangong Wuhan Dayong Magagaisa. So uh, this kind of song encourage people in Wuhan and uh, all around China very much. So I would like to know from the Philippine government, do we have any encourage messengers to, uh, me message to uh, Chinese people and uh, uh, especially to this uh, Filipino who choose uh, live in Wuhan? Thank you. Thank you for that question. In fact, I have uh, seen uh, several videos online of um, uh, Chinese people chanting that uh, specific song that you were saying. Uh, yesterday, we did uh, release a statement against uh, discrimination, that we should not discriminate um, people, especially Chinese, who are affected by this end coronavirus. Uh, this is not the trait of the Filipino. It should never be the trait of a Filipino. Um, and we did mention also that uh, there were several times or numerous times that we were in need and uh, countries around us like Singapore, Malaysia, China, uh, even the Americas in, the, in, the, in Europe were there for us. So we should be also there for the Chinese people who are suffering this uh, end corona virus in prayer and also in support. There should be no room for uh, discrimination. I will be uh, ask. Do you have do you have a, a, an answer for that? Okay. So later on, I have a meeting with the president, and we will uh, ask the president uh, what his message is to the Chinese people. Thank you. Thank you. I have another question to uh, Dr. Rabinja from WHO. Um, you just mentioned that uh, uh, all the states need to work together to prevent this kind of transmission of the virus. So I would like to know some comments from you about how do you see Chinese government's uh, um, actions, like uh, they locked down quite a lot of cities to prevent the spread of the virus and uh, uh, like uh, we uh, Chinese government built a hospital in eight 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 days 
to uh, can contain a lot of people uh, there. So I would like to know from uh, the WHO side. Thank you. Thank you for the question. WHO acknowledges the proactive role that China has played right from the beginning of this outbreak, uh, transparently sharing information as it becomes available, sharing knowledge, the identification of the pathogen per se, uh, defining its whole genome sequence, sharing that and sharing diagnostics, also sharing information about the clinical presentations, the manifestations and how the patients are managed. All of that has been valuable in helping WHO better understand this disease. So as our Director General mentioned, uh, when he met Professor uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, we are very appreciative of those efforts of uh, the Chinese government. Uh, we also are encouraged by the measures China is implementing to contain this outbreak both in Wuhan and Hubei and within China, but also from spreading to other countries. WHO acknowledges and is monitoring closely China's efforts to lock down approximately 50 million people now to contain this outbreak. As uh, WHO has mentioned, this is unprecedented in global public health, and we are closely looking at its effectiveness and what its relevance would be for future global efforts in containing these kinds of epidemics. Uh, we also appreciate the early uh, efforts implemented by the government of China in implementing uh, a travel ban for tour groups uh, to travel abroad and in early implementation of exit screening to screen patients leaving China. These are important uh, experiences that WHO is trying to understand and see what is replicable and good so that we can learn from these experiences on their potential usefulness. And we continue to work both on the ground in China with your specialists to better understand what is necessary to control this disease and to help control the disease in China. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, last question uh, to anyone who can answer it, because uh, uh, we just mentioned in the press conference that uh, there's no local transmission here in the Philippines yet. Um, but uh, what the government prepared to do uh, to in case this uh, outbreak will happen in the Philippines, because uh, maybe we will face some shortage of the equipment like face masks and especially like uh, the, the uh, doctors and the uh, nurses in the hospital, their equipment may be uh, face a shortage. So I would like to know how the government will do in face this. Based on our recent meetings in the Department of Health, uh, as early as uh, now, there are efforts to procure huge amounts of personal protective equipment, uh, not only from local sources, but even from international sources. Uh, in anticipation of a possible wider spread of this um, coronavirus. And of course, we are still at the containment phase, which means there's no community transmission. That's why a, a huge amount of effort is currently being implemented to identify possible uh, people who may transmit the disease. As you know, there is contact tracing of the uh, persons who, who were found to be positive, and that's not a small amount of effort. You identify all the possible uh, contacts of that patient, you, you assess their health condition, you treat them, or you, you quarantine them if necessary. So uh, those are really very um, huge uh, measures being undertaken to avoid th that, the transition of the country from simple containment to mitigation. So hopefully we will not reach that particular stage. Okay, we still have, thank you. Yeah, we still have Pia, Ace, Mikael, Chona, and Alvin. Okay, Dr. Carlos, as a follow-up to the question of Ms. Yellow, you, you mentioned a while ago that the RITM is uh, preparing for a possible search of uh, uh, people that you need to, um, to check whether they have the coronavirus. Could you tell us more about your preparations map? Um, we have um, a surge capacity plan uh, for training subnational laboratories to be able to do the test. But since uh, 
we just acquired the technology fairly recently and started testing Thursday last week. Uh, we may need to, you know, first make an assessment of five subnational laboratories previously identified. In fact, we have been training them for influenza surveillance since almost five years ago, and the test for coronavirus uses the same uh, test format. So it will not be difficult. Uh, we just have different reagents and different primers. So we are, uh, we have that plan, and in the last uh, command conference of the DOH there were already measures laid out on how they can be uh, capa provided capacity to do the test. So in the future, ma'am, we may be able to activate five more laboratories for the testing? Yes. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, follow up lang din po dun sa, uh, or just to clarify yung uh, nabanggit nyo po kanina, returning uh, Filipinos from China, if they do not manifest any symptoms, ang meron lang sila is a travel history to China, they can self-quarantine. But what about those coming from uh, Hubei province or Wuhan po? I think the same uh, recommendations hold. Uh, the decision tree is clear. If you have no symptoms, you just have an exposure to, you know, uh, by travel, then you can uh, do just self-quarantine. Can you miss that? Uh, Ma'am, ito po, uh, that's being, uh, is that being explained in depth dun sa mga bumabalik po na Filipinos from China? Um, yes, po. Uh, we are in close coordination of, with the Bureau of Quarantine, who does the explanation po when it comes to the uh, quaran uh, pagka quarantine po nitong mga dumadating natin na OFWs. So they are advised po kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin. And then um, sila din po yung nagsasabi kung ano yung step by step na dapat gawin at kung saan po magre report kung sakali pong makaramdam ng any symptoms of um, the coronavirus. Mama, ano pong ginagawang basis ng Bureau of Immigration to verify kung totoo yung sinasabi na travel history ng isang taon? Passports po. Makikita po yan sa passports kasi kasama po dito sa travel ban is not just yung pinanggalingan niya but the uh, travel history within the last 14 days. So makikita po sa passport kung saan ang bansa po nang galing. So if, if within the last 14 days, the person, um, the foreign national came from Hong Kong, China or Macau, automatic po uh, we can deny this the, the, the entry of this person. At the same time po, nagpadala na rin po tayo ng advice sa airlines, hindi, um, pati po sa mga shipping agents, to pre-screen the, uh, the foreign nationals that are um, boarding their, their vessels to make sure na hindi na po makasakay at, at uh, itong mga foreign nationals na to, to para po maiwasan na kailangan pa natin silang ibalik. And pre-screening po really is uh, to the advantage of the the company dahil hindi na po nila kailangan ng added cost para ibalik pa po yung taong ito since di automatic disqualified naman na po yan kapag ka pumasok sila sa bansa. Last na lang po kay Secretary Andenor. Sir, what do you say to criticisms na yung emergency meeting later ay uh, masyado ng late considering na last week pa po na na-report yung first death from coronavirus in the Philippines? No, it's not late. In fact, uh, very timely ang decision ng gobyerno. Again, uh, we follow also the, the directives and also the, um, uh, the recommendation from the World Health Organization, uh, the Department of Health. Again, I would like to um, reiterate na itong namatay na, na infected by the end coronavirus uh, is a person from China at yung infected din yung kanyang kasama. Wala pang Pilipino, um, uh, thank God, na, na infected nito. Uh, yung, uh, yung desisyon naman ng gobyerno ay uh, very uh, methodical. At yung uh, meeting mamaya ay nataon lang din uh, na timely because nung weekend namatay yung, uh, yung uh, pasyente na galing pan China uh, and unfortunately the first death outside China. Uh, sir, sino-sino yung mga kasama dun sa meeting and what uh, can the public expect dun sa outcome ng meeting na yun? Hindi ko masagot kung sino-sino because I was also just informed. Pero ang nakalagay dun, Pia, is a select number of uh, cabinet members. So meaning hindi lahat. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Ace and then Mikhail. Uh, to our officials, uh, just curious because uh, the first death, our first uh, confirmed the first death in the Philippines is the second confirmed 
case of NCOV, tama po. Okay. But uh, when the DOH, when the government announced the first case of the NCOV, there was no mention of the 44-year-old Chinese man who is already suffering from the disease. May we know why uh, there was no announcement regarding the the second case of the NCOV? Uh, I was in the press con when Secretary Duque announced the death of the first case. And he did mention that the first case had a companion, a male companion, who was also sick. But at that time, the male companion was not as ill as uh, what happened in the subsequent days. So the illness progressed subsequently, which uh, eventually led to his demise. Ah, okay, so when he was ill, it was not yet NCOV. It was not yet a confirmed case that time. Uh, it wasn't confirmed. The, okay. His confirmation came later. Ah, later. So it just deteriorated fast. Opo. Yeah, his condition deteriorated in the last 24 hours. Okay, do you have any information as to how many people have interacted or had interacted with the fatality? The, this, of course, will be the health personnel mm -hmm. uh, attending to him and uh, the people perhaps who were exposed during their travels because they traveled to different places in the Philippines. And that is now being investigated by the Epidemiology Bureau. Okay. Thank you, Pa. Okay. Mikael? Microphone, please. Alvin, paabot ng mic. Hi. Good morning, Dr. Carlos. Mikael Flores of AFP News Agency. Ma'am, just to clarify on the timeline of the two confirmed cases, because DOH announced the first confirmed case on January 31, and then the first uh, mortality was announced yesterday. Um, why was there a uh, two-day gap between the confirmation of the cases? When did you actually confirm that the second confirmed case is NCOV because it turns out that the two are a couple from Wuhan. So why were they were they not tested at the same time? Uh, the first the, the sample from the first confirmed case uh, was sent to Australia, and the sample from the second case was uh, although sent just last Friday. We had the results done. We had the testing done already at RITM by by the time. So. Um, the uh, the official results from the second case was sent out last Saturday, Saturday morning only. Uh, so the results of the first uh, confirmed case came earlier because that was sent to Australia. Mom, just to clarify, the second confirmed case was test was confirmed already by our, our ITM because we have the capability already. Yes. Mom, why why did our uh, why did the government not send both samples to Australia? Um, why did you just decide to send the sample of the first, con fir first case? We sent actually the sample to Australia of the second case mm -hmm. last Friday, and we're waiting for the results, which may probably come anytime soon. So uh, since we had the capability already for testing uh, Thursday last week, we decided, of course, to process the sample of the other uh, PUIs sent to us, and we had that result. And just to make sure that perhaps we were doing the right thing, we also processed in parallel the sample from the first confirmed case, which was positive, and we had the same results. So the staff was confident that our procedure was correct. Mom, can you give us an update of the, I think there, we have around 30, 436 POIs and four uh, are undergoing testing. Uh, can you give us an update if there are, of the, if the four uh, remaining uh, cases have turned out to be positive or negative, and do we have additional PUIs as of today? Uh, I don't know about the additional PUIs because that's the within the database of the Epi Bureau. The, the question should probably be answered by the Epi Bureau people. But as to the rest, so far with the results uh, sent to me for approval, there has been no positive results to date. Mom, uh, why did you after not after the second? Mom, just to clarify, you already knew uh, on Saturday that uh, there's a second confirmed case. Mm -hmm. Mom, why did you decide not to announce that on Saturday? And why did you announce it just yesterday? Well, we sent the results to our superiors and uh, it, it was the uh, decision above which, uh, you know, they, it was them who decided when to call for the 
uh, announcement. But uh, that was late Saturday already. So perhaps there was not enough time to gather people to make the announcement on the same day. Ma'am, around what time did the patient, uh, was the patient pronounced dead? And was the confirmation before the, uh, before the patient died or after, after the patient expired? The confirmation came before. Be came before. Ma'am, around what time namatay yung pasyente? If you, if you I am not aware of the exact uh, time of death. But uh, it was Saturday. It was Saturday. Uh, to uh, Ms. Dana, can you clarify on the Chinese who are currently in um, Naia? Uh, where did they come from and where exactly in uh, Naia are they currently held? This is collectively, so there's uh, they are not bunched up together in in one terminal. So um, I would have to get the details, kung saan saan sila galing, but most probably within um, the China and the uh, special administrative region. That's why they were caught in limbo and when and, and at the airports. But um, like I said earlier, um, the Chinese embassy has already coordinated this with our office and um, is planning to send uh, special flights to fetch their um, nationals. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Uh, excuse me, wait. Well, can we have uh, Albin Baltasar? Okay, it's a follow-up question. Yes, please, please use the microphone, please. Uh, regarding the passengers stranded in the airports, uh, I think it's not just Chinese yes. is the, the the biggest number. Most, but yeah. with what would happen with the others? I think there are also Americans. Most of them were able to depart already. So right now it's mainly Chinese. Yes. The one most stranded of the there. most of the ones who were stranded yesterday were able to depart already. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Alvin. Then Chana. Doctor Carlos, good morning, po. Doctor, here, ma'am. <laughs> Doctor, how, how can we assure the safety of uh, the patients, pati yung mga health workers na naka-assign sa San Lazaro Hospital? Pati na doon sa mga hospital na kung saan mayroong mga patients under observation? Uh, for San Lazaro and RITM, we have set standard procedures on infection prevention and control. And that covers a lot of things from uh, the wearing of the personal protective equipment, to handling of patients, to cleaning of rooms occupied by infected patients, and so on. So uh, we ha both of the hospitals have a long history of handling emerging infectious diseases. And so far, we have uh, been good. <laughs> the health workers have been, uh, uh, none, none of them so far have been infected. Doctor. Dapat lang ba na magbigay tayo ng additional or recommend na magbigay ng additional hazard pay doon sa mga health workers na naka-assign sa mga patients? Uh, yeah, um, in addition to the previous answer, we also uh, request our health workers to monitor their temperature twice a day. Uh, and then uh, we quarantine them in case they develop any symptoms and uh, we, we manage the symptoms. Um, your question is about the hazard pay. I think Additional that, uh, that would be good, <laughs> but uh, it's not within my power to determine uh, whether that should be given. But if if that is recommended, I, I'm sure all of us will welcome that, especially from RITM and San Lazaro. Will you recommend them? Of course. <laughs> okay. Okay. Although we have a standard hazard pay in government, but there are people who are exposed to more hazards than others. But they received the same remuneration. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin. Uh, um, just a point of clarification regarding uh, the earlier question about the 300 Chinese. The, the number does not just include those who are at the airports right now. It also includes the ones, the Chinese nationals who are in the country who want to um, go back to their homelands already. So it's not just the ones at the airports, but includes all those who are um, in the country who wants to go home now. I'm sorry? Not only in Manila. Okay, thank you. Chona, Ma'am, any update on efforts of the government to track down uh, yung people who, who got contact dun sa one couple? The, the Epidemiology Bureau staff have the updated information. I'm sorry, I don't have the updated information. 
Okay. Ed, ma'am, dun sa RITM, may mga test sample pa ba tayo na hinaantay from Melbourne, Australia? Wala. We sent three samples mm -hmm. uh, from three patients. So we are awaiting that. Mm -mm. And those samples are from people who came from China also? Wuhan? Yes, from China. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Can we have our friend from? Yes, please state your name. Hi, uh, good morning. Joanna Balyaran from GG Press. Ma'am, uh, Dr. Carlos, my question is, uh, how do you ensure that passengers will follow self-quarantine procedures? Um, do you, does the government have like uh, a means to uh, monitor these passengers? Because unlike in other countries, they're stuck in one place for 14 days. So how do you ensure that they will follow self-quarantine procedures? Uh, we have personnel under the Epidemiology Bureau who uh, follow up this suspected, uh, this, uh, this personnel who are requested to do home quarantine. So they monitor uh, this personnel. Okay, Acer, and then Raymond, Julie, and um, Dr. Carlos. Um, uh, here, uh, Dr. Carlos, just to clarify, um, we have our own uh, capacity to uh, detect if a uh, case is confirmed of NCOV here. But um, do we still have to send the sample to Australia before announcing that a patient is confirmed, even if we have our own ability to uh, confirm the test we, sample? Uh, I think I need to correct your statement. We announced, in fact, that there was a second positive even before we received the confirmatory test results because the sample from the second positive is still being run in Australia right now. So the secretary decided that this should be announced uh, because he's, he was maybe he was confident about our findings. So uh, just to clarify, we don't need to wait for the test to come back. No more, no more. Okay, thank you. Okay, can we have... Hi, I'm Yan from Phoenix TV Hong Kong. For Ms. Dana, um, does the travel ban also include um, Chinese citizens who may not be coming from China, Hong Kong, and Macau? Um, the ban specifically states that all foreign nationals who are coming from um, uh, China, Hong Kong, and Macau. So we, we implement the directive to the letter. So if, uh, for example, um, they are um, permanent residents of the United States, then they are not included. What if they're, um, sorry, Chinese citizens but not coming from um, China, Hong Kong, and Macau in the last 14 days? Yeah, but they are not included if they are not. Uh, they did not come from the, those three countries, because um, what we are looking at is not the nationality, but where they came from. So since um, these are the areas that the um, Department of Health recommended that we implement the travel ban, the, the president um, uh, said this directive um, gave this directive to us. Hence, we implement it. So any foreign national, um, not just the Chinese, but all other nationalities, if um, they come from these areas of concern, then they will not be uh, allowed to enter the country. Thank you. Okay, my question, see si Henry Uli, I think for doc Dr. Carlos. Uh, Ma'am, pwede po daw patanong sa ang hotel ang check-in, nag-check-in sa Manila yung Wuhan couple after they get back from Dumaguete and kumusta yung mga staff ng hotel na nakasalumuha especially nung namatay na Chinese? Uh, I'm sorry, I do not have such information. Okay. The Epidemiology Bureau staff would have the information. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, last two, uh, Raymond and then, I mean, Julie. To Dr. Rabi. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, just your assessment on how the Philippine government, specifically the Department of Health, reacted when there was this announcement of outbreak of NCOV, and how is DOH now acting to prevent the spread of the virus? So I believe that the Philippine government has been responding to an evolving situation. As I mentioned, this is a new situation, it's an evolving situation, and with the emergence of disease and the emergence of more information, uh, the government response has been proactively strengthened. Uh, we have been working very closely in guiding that response. Um, as new evidence emerges, as I explained earlier, and as WHO classified the event as a public health emergency, the Philippine government 
implemented more stringent measures. This is in relation to the relative risk and the pattern of movement of people. And so uh, we are satisfied so far with the measures being implemented by the government of the Philippines. And uh, we are continuing to work with them to increase their preparedness in case there are further importations or there is evidence of local transmission. As I mentioned earlier, at this point of time, there are no reports of any confirmed local transmission. Thank you very much, Dr. Abi. Okay, uh, Julie. To Dr. Carlos, um, you said earlier that if patients or PUIs or those um, practicing self-quarantine should exhibit any symptoms, they should seek medical advice. Um, when they go to the hospitals, what, what kind of protocol should they expect or should they ask for? For example, should they go to directly to the clinics or to the ER? Paano pong mangyayari doon? Kasi syempre, pag pumili ka sa klinik ng doktor, mas marami ka pang pwedeng mahawa, di ba? Pag sa ER, ganun din naman. So, anong mga protocols po yung ipapatupad ng mga hospitals natin, particularly the private hospitals which are not under the government? Um, we, we have seen private hospitals initiating their own uh, measures to address this. Uh, in fact, there are private hospitals who establish separate triage areas okay. to evaluate patients consulting for possible and no, uh, novel coronavirus infection. I have seen tents uh, tents erected in some private hospitals separate from their regular emergency rooms mm -hmm. where these uh, patients who qualify under the, the decision table can directly proceed and they have dedicated personnel uh, to attend to these patients. So that probably is the first that the, the person who wishes to consult should know. Mm -hmm. uh, they should ask where if there are a specific place in the hospital or area where they will be evaluated. And that is the same practice in the Department of Health Hospitals. We have uh, special areas mm -hmm. for evaluating these cases. At least and for private hospitals, that's the very basic that they should do. They should okay. have a specific area to diagnose or to, to, evaluate. Yeah, to evaluate those yeah. patients. Yes. And then, like, what kind of protocol should they expect? Because maybe later on, the patient will be able to sanitize the bong bong or protective gear, whatever. Uh -uh. Um, the DOH has released um, guidelines on preparedness and response for this particular organism, and that includes infection and prevention control guidelines. So hopefully that will be followed by everybody because that is supposed to be implemented by all hospital facilities. And uh, the instructions are quite clear on what to do and how to address the, the infection control issues. Okay, our friend from? Um, hello, ma'am. Buena Bernal from Channel News Asia. Um, for our ITM, ma'am, um, since the um, contact tracing is crucial for um, the containment effort and there was a nine-day nine day window from the date of arrival of the uh, second confirmed case to the date that the contract uh, contact tracing was done, um, can we know how long is the waiting period for the test results? It's 48 hours. And uh, for the <coughs> surge capacity plan, ma'am, can we know the timeline and how many subnational centers there are? There are currently five um, subnational laboratories uh, to be upgraded. And, um, well, we cannot just tell them to test tomorrow. <laughs> they have to be uh, equipped in terms of facilities, reagents, and to be trained on the protocol and to be given proficiency tests to assess whether they can perform the test properly. That's the only time that they will be allowed to do the actual sample testing. Is there an estimated timeline, ma'am, for when uh, they could do this? Well, this, we hope it can be done very soon, but we, we have already drawn the plans. And as I mentioned earlier, these were subnational labs uh, um, established to do influenza surveillance more about five years ago. So the basic uh, steps for PCR, which is the test, uh, polymerase chain reaction, have been taught to them. But there will be some adjustments for a specific protocol on novel coronavirus. Would you say that it's safe to say it's within this month or within the, the next few weeks? No. Very hard to say. Uh, okay. And these five centers, ma'am, can, can we just know the, uh, where they are located? 
Uh, one is in Baguio General Hospital, second is San Lazaro Hospital, third is Lung Center, fourth is Vicente Soto Hospital in Cebu, and last is Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao. Uh, last question, ma'am. Can we know the cost of the testing? Honestly, we have not costed it because we are doing it for free. But uh, when we tried to estimate uh, for our own information how much it will really uh, cost, my staff estimates it to be between 15, around 15,000 to 20,000. Okay, thank you. Last question. Um, so just a quick follow up regarding the ban of entry. What happened with the passengers coming? Are you thinking, for example, there are a lot of flights coming from Europe to the Philippines. They do a short scale in Hong Kong, maybe one hour. The passengers just stayed at the airport. That passengers are also banned from entry to the Philippines. Regarding your uh, question earlier, how many were requested for repatriation? It, uh, formerly it was 40, it's now 42. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah. Okay, thank you, media friends. Thank you to our guest, Secretary. Uh, uh, this is with regard to the question of Joanne. No? Joanne, you asked about um, uh, who will track down those uh, patients who are into self-quarantine. I believe that yesterday there was a discussion among the cabinet members in the cabinet thread, and Secretary Ed Anyo messaged this. So if, I, if you'd allow me to read it. Uh, for newly arrived Filipino citizens that do not manifest symptoms, a 14-day quarantine shall be imposed inside their homes. The Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams shall account and monitor concerned individuals daily taking temperature, etc., et until the end of the quarantine period. If anyone would show any symptom of N coronavirus, the Barangay officials will coordinate with DOF slash IATF for the immediate transfer of the patient to the hospital for treatment and isolation. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Martin. Dr. Rabi? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate, as I mentioned earlier, that WHO remains confident that this coronavirus outbreak can be controlled. We need the public to act rationally. WHO has provided guidelines it is important that we don't panic unnecessarily. It's important that we maintain hand hygiene by regularly washing hands with soap and water, not touching our mouth, nose, and ears. If you have signs of respiratory infection, to wear a mask to protect other people, practice cough etiquette, maintain at least one meter distance from your nearest uh, neighbors if you have a respiratory infection, and uh, practice cough etiquette so that droplets are not spread. Uh, ensure that all meat are properly cooked. By doing these, we are confident that based on current available evidence, this outbreak of 2019 novel coronavirus can be controlled successfully, as we have done previously with SARS and MERS. So our message is not to panic, but to act rationally and carefully. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Rabi. Dr. Carlos? Um, my message is, at the moment, there is no community transmission yet of the novel coronavirus in the Philippines. We are at the containment stage, which means uh, we are trying to prevent the virus from spreading to the community by identifying cases who can possibly have been infected. And since these are mostly from China and the uh, special administrative regions, we encourage uh, travelers who have been exposed or had traveled to those areas to please, uh, if requested to be home quarantined, to follow exactly the instructions. Uh, isolate themselves in a room, wear a ma face mask, uh, take your temperature twice a day. If you start experiencing symptoms, report to the hospital authorities for evaluation. Uh, we do not want family members of the returning uh, travelers to be infected because one family member who becomes infected 
can, as I showed in my slides, infect two or more. So 2.4 is the reproduction rate. So it can double the number of patients. If we all follow that and we practice respiratory toilet, uh, cough etiquette, uh, proper disposal of waste, do not just uh, dispose waste anywhere, I think we are confident uh, that we can uh, remain at the stage of containment instead of progressing to mitigation. Second, let us reserve our masks to those who need them. Uh, I have seen many people wearing masks, and uh, please think of whether uh, this mask, use of these masks are indicated. Because now there is a current shortage of this uh, valuable commodity, and let us give them to those who need them most, especially the health workers. And then uh, from the DOH, at least from, for our ITM, we are trying to do our share in uh, identifying these cases and confirming through testing who are really infected and who are not, so that people who are uh, test negative can be discharged from the hospital as soon as possible. We have released hotlines to the different agencies of uh, um, to the different hospitals so that they can uh, follow the results of the test as soon as possible. And uh, in the near future, we hope to establish more infectious disease specialty centers so that uh, the expertise in infectious disease will be present not only in Metro Manila, but in other regions of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carlos. Yusa Cabella. Uh, the DFA continues to ensure the protection of uh, uh, nationals abroad and also to ensure the uh, well-being of, uh, of the d domestic uh, public. Also regarding questions about the re repatriation timeline, uh, we need to remind ourselves that repatriation is subject to Chinese government's laws, including immigration and quarantine clearances. So uh, it's not just a unilateral move. Thank you. Okay, spoke, spoke. Double. Good morning. Uh, the Bureau of Immigration urges everyone to refrain from unnecessary travel. Kung hindi po importante ang biyahe ninyo at hindi po kailangan kailangan, mas maigi po that we delay it, we postpone it until everything gets sorted out. Um, please bear with us as we are implementing measures ad ad as advised by the Department of Health. Who knows what is best for us to fight this virus? Um, let us also follow, sundin po natin ng maigi, the recommendations of the Department of Health um, on, on sanitation and hygiene and how to protect ourselves um, because this is for everyone's safety. Thank you very much. Okay, Secretary Andanar. Thank you to our uh, guest today, Yusek Ernie Abelia, uh, spokesperson Dana Sandoval, Dr. Celia Carlos, and um, from the WHO, our representative here in the Philippines, uh, Dr. Rabi Abe Yasing. Thank you so much for uh, taking time to provide vital information to the public. Uh, I advise the public also to continue to uh, monitor the news from uh, the private uh, network companies that we have here. Uh, also, uh, Presidential Communications Operations Office, we have a logging Handa PH page where you can uh, uh, continuously uh, monitor uh, the situation on this uh, end corona virus. And for those who are also watching in the regions, in Region 10, uh, Northern Mindanao, I will be there to also uh, convene a, a special or emergency uh, briefing about the end coronavirus so that uh, we can ensure our Kababayans in Region 10 that uh, the government is on top of the situation. Reminding the public also that we have uh, an emergency meeting later with the President around 5 o'clock or 5.30 in the afternoon, and this will be open to the media afterwards. Thank you so much, uh, Yusek Rocky. Back to you. Yes. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, media friends. Back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.